Aceveda Aesthetics Corp. This is Made in House. It's the show where we chat through various topics on design, culture, and the business of creativity. Now say hello and welcome Carrie and Angel. Hello internet, welcome to Made in House episode 3. Tres. We're in episode two, fam. This isn't even three. Oh, yeah, because we started as Oh, zero. my gosh. Episode we two. We lied. Dos minutos. Wow. Dos. I was wondering. I was, like, know, in my mind, I was like, my name is Angel Acevedo. This is my super talented and beautiful wife, Carely. Carielis. Oh, sorry. Carielis. And uh, I want to send a special shout out to my swag. Uh, this this episode is sponsored by Gaiad. Every episode is sponsored by Gaiad, fam. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Cari? Love. Like my, that's a cool hoodie yeah best seller that hoodie yeah best seller shout best out seller. to atomic as well mm, yeah i mean support local yeah how are you feeling Cari? everything good i feel good my stomach just made a noise i hope the mic didn't pick that up <laughs> <laughs> but i'm good yeah yeah what do you think of the last few episodes i feel great yeah. i'm ready to do this yeah okay so we kind of gave ourselves a timer for yeah. this talk so let's let's just let's do it let's this get right. on with it so so today's episode of made in house is about overcoming creative block overcoming creative block i'm sure none of you have ever experienced that of course right not. what about you Cari? have you have you ever experienced creative block um i'm gonna go out and say Oof, i know what you're gonna say what am i gonna say there's no such thing as creative block <laughs> <laughs> how did you know uh, because man wait okay know. hold on break it down you're for a me. contrarian how did you how did you're you figure contrarian. that out i've heard this before i've heard uh i've heard uh people complain oh i can't do stuff i can't because mm-hmm. creatively i'm un- uninspired or whatever um but i don't remember where i heard this and and if, i don't know if i was in school or work or whatever and it was one of those things where Someone mentioned it was like, yeah, that doesn't exist because you're always on a journey and you're always like trying to overcome something, you know? So mm-hmm. creative block is like BS. Like that's just a dumb excuse, <laughs> you know? So I knew you were going to say, is that, is that what you're going to say? That was what I was going to no. say. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Good. Okay. okay. So I guess we're done. So All I right. Thanks for joining us. And our Maiden marriage ha- is <laughs> steel proof. Is that a word? No. <laughs> Steel proof? Like, what, what's a, what, how do you are, say that? I don't, I, I don't know my English words. Uh, but está duro. Está, yes. Okay. Um, actually, I, yeah, let's dive into that. I really like that. I really like that um, uh, sort of approach. And I've, like I said, I've heard that before. Mm-hmm. Um, so does creative block exist? Like, is that, what do you feel? I know you, you're saying it doesn't exist, but what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I just, I agree with whoever said whatever you yeah, heard. Yeah, I don't know. What you... Um... I, to be honest, um, I think it's a mixture of one, your preparedness and two, your experience Um, in terms of ideating, coming up with ideas. Ideas are just connecting thoughts together, you know, and it's just like you have a goal. How can we uh, do everything possible to reach that goal? And there's you know there's execution that takes place so i think when it comes to creative block i i tend to i just think you're not prepared or you're just not experienced enough because at the very least you can have a conversation okay let me say something hold on it's not about getting it right right away and i think that's part of like like a creative insecurity and like this creative thing of like oh, my idea is going to suck, you know, Mm. or like I shouldn't share that. Nobody's going to think that's cool or that's good, you know, and it's like it's not even always about getting it right. And I don't even think that's the goal, because when you're working well, you're working in collaboration with other people and like the responsibility and the burden is not all on you. You know, you don't got to get everything right. So for me, there's more value in you having an idea than telling me I ain't got no idea because I got creative block. Because at the very least, you giving me something may spark something in me and somebody else. At least we can have a conversation. We can say let's circle back with the next steps, the very clearly laid out next steps. So literally for me, you coming to me and saying, 
I have nothing is like, okay, you didn't come ready to work. Wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> I think we got in the episode the there. The idea I, uh, ready. <clears throat> yeah, that's, you know, I, I, I agree with you 100%. <clears throat> and I like that you said that uh, creative block comes from a, from a, <clears throat> from a, uh, what, what was it? Like a space of insecurity or like a. Yeah, I think so. Right. <clears throat> and um, sorry, my. <clears throat> You're okay. It's like, as I have water here. I like that you said that it comes from like a, a, a place of insecurities that was a right word that comes from a place of insecurity i never really thought of it that way i guess when or you're just n- n- unpreparedness unpreparedness yeah mm-hmm. what, but but you know when you're starting out in your career usually that's the space mm-hmm. you live in you're constantly what am i doing what am i doing i'm not i don't know what i'm doing you know yeah. and uh you're super anxious and you're not prepared because you don't know how to prepare you True. know yeah and, and so it's i mean when you were in in college oh i had no idea right neither the, even me that where I, w- I had some experience yeah i had i didn't know and the the, the anxiety of like the deadline and the stress level mm-hmm. of like what am i but gonna you do? really take on this role of like everything's on me right you know what i mean right. and that's unhealthy what's well, that i think there's a like a something about like a spotlight there's like a not a syndrome but there's something about like there's a spotlight someone will correct me in the comments but where um you always think that your the eyes are on you mm. and it's up to you to solve everything yeah. you know so and i agree 100 percent. i think that i love that you said that uh, uh brainstorming or creativity is connecting ideas mm. you know and i think that's really good it's it's really powerful i'm a big believer and we talked about this before and i was just i was just sharing uh at the the boot team team night um where bad ideas lead to good ideas and you got to get all the bad ideas out of the way. And where I got that from, now that I'm remembering, is when I was reading a book on freelancing. I think it, it was freelance, how to freelance without losing your soul or something like that. I think mm-hmm. it's the name of the book. It's like this old book. And the author was saying that one of his professors, I don't remember what class it was. It was a professor. Let's just say it was a professor. He noticed that in his desk, he had sketches, mm-hmm. like sketches of sketches of sketches of something of like some things that he was trying to get out and to him he asked him was like why do you why do you have so many sketches like this is there's this is and a lot of these are terrible and he was like well i have to get all the bad ideas out of the way in order to make room for the the good ideas and for to lead me to the good ideas and i really i was like holy crap that's really good mm-hmm. because as as creatives a lot of the times like you said it's like you're afraid of sharing or you're afraid of like well this is yeah. You know, uh, a, a bad idea I don't want to say because of personal, emotional, mm-hmm. you don't want to be uh, rejected or be like, no, that's a terrible right. idea. Um, but yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And that process, what you're saying of like, I got to get the bad ideas out. That's not like a one time deal. That's not like I do that one day and then five years later, I'm like, I'm good. Like that's like with almost every project. That's why you conceptualize and why you pitch, right? Why you do research, why they're. Then you do creative exploration, etc. Because all of that is, it's just giving your idea, um, defining it a little bit more, you know, and getting right. it right. And the creative process, that's what it is. So, yeah, that's those are my thoughts on it. Now, if you don't have anything to say around our thesis of like, <laughs> we don't believe in this, how do you overcome creative block? Or let's 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 reframe it. How are you idea ready? How do you? Oof, idea stay? ready? Yeah. Is that I, you? Is that a you thing? Did you make that I, up? I don't know. I'm, I'm just talking. <laughs> things come up. <laughs> I love that. So you're asking me how how are you idea ready? Yeah, rather so rather right. than overcoming creative block because we're saying yeah. we don't believe that's a thing. We you know so how do you stay ready? How do you always have an idea? Right. Or at the very least, overcome the insecurities to share the ideas. Right. Well, I think one of the things that you said um, when we first when we first introduced the topic was that you need to have a goal in mind mm. or you need to have like a specific um, achievement that you need to get to. Right. Yeah. So for a project or for I guess we could talk about projects or clients, it's you need to find a solution to a certain problem, a yeah. creative problem. So first you need to establish, OK, this is what's the control or what is it that we're trying to get to? And then from there, um, I think you just have to start with I'm. I don't know. I, I believe, I, I really believe that there's really nothing new. Everything has been done mm. or everything that, yeah, everything's been done. Even 
And I was having a debate with somebody online about something. No, sorry, on Instagram, not online. Not a debate. It was just some professor guy that had replied to a comment that I I said something like that. I was like, oh, there's nothing new. Everything's been done. Um, and we were talking about is there true ideation or is there true yeah. is there true innovation anymore? Right. You, know? you don't think so? Yeah, I think there is. I, I think there is, but with the uh, with the anecdote, I guess you would say like an evolution rather yeah. than it completely being new. right, completely being new. Because even the stuff that was done before, even the stuff that was done in ancient times, was borrowed from something else. If you think about, uh, I want to say like the beginning of man, <clears throat> the things that they invented were stuff that they borrowed from nature or things that you see from nature. Mm. Even the Wright brothers, when they like, invented the plane. Okay. It was based off what of birds because mm. they, they they can fly then we can figure out how to fly so <clears throat> i think something's always there's always a foundation and there's something that kind of triggers and or sparks the idea of like if this exists then that can do that okay. you know so <clears throat> i brought this up before i think conversations about the everything is a remix documentary we should probably watch it again because it's actually really good talk about music they talk about um, art. They talk about yeah. design. They talk about architecture. I think architecture. that's on Netflix, no? It, it's was a, Netflix. A, it was on Vimeo, and I think it's now <clears throat> potentially on YouTube. Okay. I should have probably checked before we started, but it's awesome, and I recommend you guys watch. It's called Everything's a Remix, and I forget the guy's name. I'll probably just put it in the link or put it in the description or whatever. Um, but it was super helpful to be like, hey, don't feel bad. Don't feel like <clears throat> the burden that you need to be the most original yeah. Person, I or, have a book about that. You got me that book. Yeah, Let which one? Yeah, 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 go mute it and go ahead. No, you keep talking. There you go. <laughs> um, got it. As Scott is looking at her wall of books, so um, I don't think it's uh, when as young designers we feel like we need to be the the most original when we're creating stuff. We need to be, um, we need to create things that no one's ever done before, and I've come to accept that. Even the designs that I make, even the things that I do, it's because it was inspired by somebody else. So to answer your question, you have to start with research. You have to start with discovery. You have to start with what's been done before. You know. So if you're working on an identity or if you're working on some kind of marketing material or you're working on something, you got to look at the landscape of like what was done. Not only is that your due diligence, which is good, but it'll also save you from potential issues. Like I have had, even in my career, I've been in design for 20 years or identity doing logo design for for a long time even me i have had issues with logos that i've done that look like other things that have done before that that i didn't do it copying anybody else it's just i ended up landing in the same solution that other designers landed mm -hmm. i knew a, sp a particular project that i did a couple of years ago where the client ended up sending me hey this looks like that and i was super embarrassed and i was like i can't believe how did I do it? I start questioning my life and like, why am I, whatever. Yeah. Not only did it look like something else, five other logos looked very similar. And I was like, how did I not never see this? You know, I always, I also chose a shape that was very, um, that I was very um, much used all the time, you know, mm -hmm. so it was an issue that I should have done, but you have to do your due diligence um, because one, like I said, it'll inspire, let's see what's the landscape. And two, it'll protect you from potential issues whenever you're, you know, copying or doing something that someone has already done or something that's already copywritten. So that would be my step one, would be research and discovery. Yeah, to stay idea ready. Yes, to, to stay idea ready. Did you find anything? Did you I unmute just yourself? thought about this book. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, Andrew got me this book when uh, early on in our when relationship. I was when I was wooing her. Yeah, uh, I didn't put a date on it. But uh, it's called Steal, like an artist. I should read it again because I'm looking at yeah. the... Um, <laughs> I'm looking at the menu here, and it's pretty interesting. But basically, it talks about steel like an artist. Nothing is original, etc. Um, some cool thoughts on there. But um, we were at a retreat recently, and um, okay, everybody, not everybody. Let me rephrase. Um, in the Bible, there is a, a phrase, right, in mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes that says, "There is nothing new under the sun." Mm -hmm. And Pastor DC, who's our pastor from Boo Church, shout out. Um, we were in a creative camp, and she said, but God's not under the sun. So to God, there is, that, that doesn't apply. That's you really know? cool. And that was really cool. Um, you know, and it was this whole idea of, like, God inspires and God creates new. So um, when it comes to just, I don't know, being idea ready, for me, I, I've just developed a philosophy, I think, recently. 
And it's really worked out for me where um, I just, I like having references at, at, on hand yeah. at all times. You're really you know? good at that. Yeah. Her so, reference game, fam, her reference game is out of control. I mean. Like, I don't know where she pulls some of this stuff, you know. Okay. <laughs> You're sweet. Um, but I could be in a meeting and it could be the first meeting. And we could be having a conversation. I think the meeting's about something and then it deviates into, oh, what about this? What about this? And I can pull something pretty fairly quickly that then sparks a conversation. And what if we do this? What if we do that, et cetera? And so t- to be honest, I, I started doing that um, just to cope with the pacing that was required or the output that was uh, required of me. And I just found it to be really beneficial. So now it's just part of my daily practice. So even before I get to research, you know, and development, at least I can have an idea to kick something. So I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on ideation, you know, like remember when we would be like at the studio and we had a client, like, let's talk about the gym. What was the name of that gym? Oh, um, well, uh, they're called Roar. Yeah. I think it was, uh, we would spend, shop. we would spend like a day, two, three days, like, yeah looking for references and doing research. And that's a little bit different because you're also trying to position a brand, et cetera. You know, it's a little different. But we would spend time like compiling references and then we would like pitch them and we would have like three mood boards, you know, and it was like that ideation process um, took a few days, you know, where now I can put a mood board together relatively quickly. But something else that just comes with experience is I know what works and what doesn't work. Um, like 80% right. of the time. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know, I don't just pull an idea and say, hey, this is cool. And yeah. then when I start working on it, I'm like, oh, shoot, this is not going to work. I, I know, oh, this will work, this won't work. Or at the very least, I'll do my due diligence before I present the idea to make sure that it, I proof the concept somehow. Right, right. And I I feel like sometimes, it, and, and this just happened to me with a project, and I don't want, I mean, I don't want to say the name, but it wasn't until I started applying or doing an application where I was like, oh, shoot, this doesn't work. <laughs> you know, where it's like you've already exported everything, you know, yeah. and it doesn't work. But it, it's it's good. Um, but it doesn't, you're saying you didn't scrap the idea. It's no, just no, like, no. I just had to adjust it. Okay. I had to adjust mm-hmm. it, you know. Um, and that that happens when you don't have, I don't know, when you don't have a, a, a community or where you, where you do have a community, but you don't necessarily leverage the people that are around you to kind of get feedback from, mm, you know, because you're afraid good. of like, I don't know, criticisms or whatever. Yeah. And the internet can be, you know, a hellscape as well, you know. So, um, but I, um, I, I totally agree with you, and I get what you're saying. I feel like the ideation process is is connecting those dots, and I'm I'm trying to think when after when after we do research and discovery, or after we are. We already started kind of finding these ideas, mm-hmm. which, by the way, I, I feel like you need to show me how you find. Or maybe we need to do like a whole episode of like finding references, because I feel like you're so good at finding things that already exist or like things that evoke a certain feeling or a certain tone, which mm-hmm. I think that I really admire that from you. Like, I, And I look at your Pinterest board, which is insane, <laughs> and all the things that you pull out. Um, we definitely need to do like a episode on how to find references because I, I don't even know where to start but um i feel like i'm going off on a tangent um anyway all that to say so once we get the references or once we get the discovery what do we do after that uh, in order to in order to sort of innovate or like how do you where do you go from there like what do you, where do we go from here after you have the ideas yes in order to innovate yes how do you mean like what am i not making sense I'm not sure I understood. Okay, <laughs> we're we're talking about like innovation, or like if there's if there's nothing new, or if there's uh-huh. or, or or kicking off. So once we already found, we already looked at the references, and we found something cool that we like, or a direction that we like. What do we do, what do we do next? Like so, we're trying to overcome this creative block, or we're trying to overcome this. Once we find the pieces that we like, yeah. w- w- what do we do? I mean, it depends. I don't know how specific you're trying to be, but. I guess you would present them, no? So I, I just <laughs> said, okay, I don't know. 
don't know what he means, but I'm just going to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, I mean, once once I have the ideas, you know, and I've done my due diligence of, like, doing some research or... I will... Let me let me do a disclaimer. I don't do a lot of client work. Mm-hmm. I Most of my work is... Well, yeah, per project. ...for you know, yeah. one brand. Right. And I do side projects here and there. To be honest, I just don't enjoy a lot of client work. I really enjoy being working on the same project I find that, or the same brand. I find that really uh, enjoyable because I'm like, yeah. oh, let's try this. And what about this? And yeah. et cetera. So I kind of live in this world where I'm not necessarily positioning the brand too much and stuff like that. It's more so like, OK, we've done 20 of these events. What's a different take on it? You know, right. or we have the same stage. What's a different take on the stage or emails how else can we deliver the same information that's kind of the space that i tend to to live in so once i put my ideas together i pitch them whether it's to a team to a person or to an oversight to get approval um and then from there it's just making sure that those ideas once they're as they're being developed and being worked on that they are properly applied to the context of the thing you know Sometimes it's having conversations with other people. You know, if I'm working, if I'm doing the creative direction for an album, let's say, and I'm pitching a lighting look or a stage look, hey, I'm pitching the tone and the vibe. I don't know the tech behind that. So I got to go and talk to somebody. Is this possible? Can, is this within budget? Um, things like that. Like when you work with an LED, LED is light. How does that work with a camera? Like stuff like that. So I would say the next step is a conversation. It's a pitch or it's a conversation with the team or proofing, further proofing the concept. Um, That's what I would say. And sometimes even in that process, you can also scrap an idea and have to go to another another one. So again, it's just I kind of just want to open people up and like free people up that it's not about getting it right, right right away right you know it's about just let's have a conversation like what do you think about this does this work but do it in an informed way just like just be prepared you know right. just to have a combo either. yeah doing your your due diligence and and making sure you're doing all the yeah looking did at i answer your question yeah no no, no you did well i was just saying <clears throat> we're talking about create a block if that decision doesn't exist it's like sort of like a mixed bag of yes and no kind of you yeah. know um, and we're talking about sort of overcoming that or what are the steps to, you mm-hmm. know, to sort of overcome and like get to like solutions in a more efficient way. Not necessarily fast, but more efficient, yeah. you know, so. I have a very specific way of how I do this, by the way. And I taught it at Creative Hangout, which is like this uh, gathering. Are you going to share it with the Made in House? That I do. I can uh-huh. share it. Yeah, I can share it. Sure. It's a gathering that I do. The first one we did was in 2018 at in the studio That's a right. few years ago. And then I just recently did one where I shared this, but um, from this is the this is the basis of the philosophy. Anticipate the task is what I'm saying, mm. right? So there's do you, you there's two disciplines. You live in two worlds. You're either part of an in-house team, or you are a freelancer. Or you have your own company or whatever, right? So you're either on a team or you're solo, or you oversee a team as your business. Um, for an in-house team, usually you operate under a calendar because you're servicing a company. So like, let's say the Coke in-house team, you know, or whatever, Pepsi just rebranded. They're, they hire agencies, but these companies have some yeah, form of they an have in-house, in-house team. Yeah. yeah, even like Royal Caribbean, right. hire, they have an in-house team, but they still hire agencies. Um, they work off some form of calendar. They're launching certain things. They have quarters, businesses operate in quarters, right? So. These businesses know what's up. They know what they're la- launching, et cetera. So I would just get ahead on that stuff. I, I, It's not saying that the company gives you this information. It's me saying, hey, you as the creative, try to get ahead of it and ask for the information if it's not provided to you, right? right. So if you're an in-house team and that's not given to you, maybe ask the oversight or maybe you know, make that request or incorporate that into the environment if you are on your own what i would say is you're not working off a calendar now 
you're working off industries. Mm. So what kind of industries do you want to work out? What kind of work do you want to do? What kind of clients you, that you want to work with? And I learned this because Pentagram and another um, agency, Fantasy, the way they categorize their work is by industry. So if you go to uh, Pentagram's website, you look at their folio. What's their website? Do you know? Pentagram.com, is it? I believe. Okay. I think so. And I think fantasy.co, I think. Um, they'll have art and culture and they'll have like um, editorial Hospitality design. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you can look, just go on their website and look at it and say, hey, I want to do more hospitality. Hey, I want to do more art and culture. Hey, I want to be more in innovation, like in technology. And go after those people, but have references ready. Right. Think about the industry, like where is the industry going, you know? So if you want to do logos for tech companies, already be thinking about that stuff. Don't wait for the company to come to you to then start ideating, oh, what's the future of yeah, tech or like whatever. And then from there, once you're informed about the court that you're playing in, you just start saving references. So depending on the kind of work that you do, if you do packaging, if you do like type, you know, um, what's in the hierarchy, right. color palette. So you can get as micro as different aspects of design, you know, or you can put things like for me, for Vu, for example, I have environments, I have stage, I have lighting, I have kids, I have merch. Wow. I have, and then for design, I'll have, okay, what are some cool color palettes or garments for merch? And then I further break that stuff down. So that's kind of how I, I've done it. And it's really worked out for me. So it keeps me in a place where I'm constantly thinking about the world that I want to live in. And um, and so I have references. So if you come to me and you're like, I don't know, VU 2030, I got you. Kind of. <laughs> <I, kinda. clears throat> you got a reference for days. Wow. I and try. I guess, and this is a question that we all... Do, do you we, agree with that? Tell no, me. no. I, 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 I see your process and I think you're... And I've said this before to the team. It's like you're only as good as your process that you have in place. And I think what the way that you do it is it's phenomenal, you know. And um, I don't know if type A or type B or whatever, but it's just who you are. It's like you always tell me all the time. It's like I have to get these processes in place in order for me to achieve yeah. the things that I want to achieve and get to the goals that I need to get. So I feel like that's why the work that you've done at VU uh, uh, and not, not to like like uh, what's the word? Uh, blow your head up too much but i feel like the work that you've done there has been has been game changers over overall like globally for the capital c church as they call it you know it's been so strong so much so that you've changed that through vu vu's changed just the landscape of design and creativity you know in faith-based organizations i think you know so yeah it's not just me I, I know. always want to take this. Uh, of course, I know. I know. Yeah. It's you and the team. Um, but And the leadership. And the, of course, and the leadership, <laughs> you know, of course. I, but I just want to say, like, yeah. give you your flowers or I don't know how, how to say that. Give it's like, flowers? give your flowers. Oh, thank you. I don't know. I take every Thank you. Yeah, just take it. Just take it and accept it. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're great. Let's move on. <laughs> all right, all right. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, now, now I lost my train of thought. But what I was going to say was, um, yes, I agree. I, I agree with what you're saying. And um, I feel like, um, I'm one that likes to skip steps in my process, which sometimes I don't know, babe. You're pretty professional. Yeah. Well, sometimes what I was gonna say was sometimes, sometimes when I skip steps, it kind of comes and oh yeah, for and sure. bites me. Oh yeah, because it's not like, just oh. you, anybody. Well, oh, because well, that, it, it goes to show that even people that are, have been in the industry a long time, or even when you start, um, try not to skip them or try to stick yeah. to it because. It, you'll you'll do your due diligence and you won't have to do things twice you know i've always said that my laziness my laziness makes me efficient because i just don't want to have to do things mm -hmm. double you know mm -hmm. so um at least from from my process or, or when i do things i think the 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 research and and this is what's going to be my next question the research and the inspiration that i find is key to help me land in the solutions that i need to land yeah. That makes sense. Say it one more time. The inspiration that I find is key to help me land in the solutions that I need to yes, land. Yes, inspiration. Yes. Yeah, the inspiration. Mm -hmm. So with that, I was going to ask you, uh, what, 
as far as and we get this all the time which is i feel like it's a low-hanging fruit where do you find your inspiration you know Mm -hmm. i I think it's low-hanging fruit and i don't necessarily we don't necessarily need to dive into like well go to this website go to that website or whatever but what i did want to ask you was are there any uh places that are not necessarily related to creative or design or anything like that that you find interesting solutions to potential design problems like i don't know architecture or yeah you know music or any <clears throat> other thing that mm-hmm. what are those if they, if they are if they exist what are mm-hmm. they yeah i'll say first that inspiration for me isn't always attached to like a reference a lot of inspiration for me is attached to the value of what I'm working on. And what I mean is, do I believe in it? Do I agree with it on a value system? Um, because if I don't, then like water websites. Yeah, that was tragic. That was really hard to get through. That was, like there was no inspiration no. in that. Okay, so I would say that first. Um, as far as like other industries outside of, you're talking specifically are like design, that I yeah, for your for work, like for your work when you when you're trying to tackle <clears throat> a problem. Yeah, there's yeah. So theater is one of them. Um, I look at theater uh, uh, for many reasons. How the sets are, you know, when you watch a play, there's acts and they change the sets and they move things around and there's outfit changes. It's it's very coordinated, mm-hmm. you know. So that's like true. that's a space that I'm I'm very interested in, not just even for creative, for efficiency, how to run something efficiently that's timed um, and executed in an excellent way, you know, with transitions and things like that. Um, I think about business. Like, I think about Chick-fil-A all the time. I really wish I could sit in in a Chick-fil-A meeting um, because the way Chick-fil-A, like when you go to a Chick-fil-A drive through or right. even just like just order the efficiency, they got your name. They, they just bring the stuff to your table. Yeah. There's no number on the table. Right. You know what I mean? Or like the drive through lane. It's like quick stuff like that. And I'm like, what are these people valuing? Like what kind of conversations are they having? How do they come up with this stuff? You know, um, of making me feel valued um, and giving me really great food. So, like, I'll think about stuff like that. Um, I feel like, and, and if I can interject in the Chick-fil-A situation, yeah. I feel like that's that obviously comes from the top. And it comes with the culture that that they set, yes. set up. Because even the language that they use. Yes. And, and you can kind of, t- you can differentiate a Chick-fil-A. Em- yeah, I know. You can differentiate a Chick-fil-A employee from... Oh, employees yeah. from other places you know and it's 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 really uh mind-boggling like mm-hmm. the um, the level that they've reached everyone talks the same they do the same things and it's just like yeah copy paste mm-hmm. copy paste you know and they 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 protect the brand and they protect that yeah. overall which i think yeah i'm with you go ahead sorry I, i'll share two more yeah and then you can you, you can tell us what yours are well, another one for me is f1 how the the pit stop you're doing all the cool ones but what go ahead i'm like yeah how do they do this yeah like that's guys that's like real technical stuff like physics and science engineering all of these things design all of them coming together in such a precise way that when you get to that pit stop seconds and you go otherwise you're messing with your metal yeah. you know what i mean like that for me is inspiring yeah. like but again, I think it has to do with my personality. The last one I'll say is music. I've been thinking about music and the the role that music has in brand building. Right. Um, and in getting messages across. Um, so I don't necessarily pay attention to uh, like the song itself, but the strategy behind the song. Mm. So like even the way a bridge, I don't know the terminology, but I know you, we had this conversation in Puerto Rico, how there's a certain way that a song is set up. Mm-hmm. And then in this generation, they kind of they changed flipped it. it. The, I think it was a box video. They talked about how now songs start with the chorus and then they get into the, yeah. So it, it used to be the other way. They started out with the verses, then into the chorus, then a bridge or whatever. So I'll pay attention to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that will give me a lot of inspiration 
for my work, yeah. how to work with a team, how to become more efficient, how to deliver ideas, how to think about ideas. Like, because at the end of the day, my work is attached to a conversion, whether it's to get to change a behavior or to uh, set a finance, reach a financial goal. Wow. Wow. <sighs> That's really the. I wish. I'm thinking I'm like, okay, man, stop it. Stop and just answer the question. I know. What I just wish that mine was so uh, business, tell us. you know, no, just uh, tell us. I, I, I think, and you probably know this because uh, I consider myself a gamer. I have a PlayStation. And I, you consider you yeah, are. I'm a gamer, guys. I'm a gamers. What's up, gamers? Um, I've been gaming since Nintendo, you know, the classic or Atari. I don't remember. <laughs> I do find one of my sources of inspiration is, is, is gaming. And mm. I feel like. And I, I feel like I've, I've exposed you, yes, you have. to cool insights of mm. the gaming is not just, oh, I'm just going to play a video game. Or at least it can be. It can be if you want to play like, I don't know, older games that are just kind of like easy, you know, whatever, side scrolling or whatever. But now, nowadays games are a lot more intricate or they're, they're a lot more, um, the experience is a lot deeper and 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 you 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 feel I mean, they, they make you it's like they're more cinematic mm. you know we just finished the last of us series which i think was incredible but the last of us games which is 10 years old have been uh just monumental at least in the gaming landscape for the storytelling it's one of the if not at least for me the best single player story game of all time i want to say you know this is just my That's my opinion far. this is my opinion but part one and part two i really love both of them but there are other games <clears throat> like indie games like this game called Control by Remedy. I think it's called oh, Remedy yeah, Games. Talk about that. Yeah. You have a book. You have the book. The book is, the book it's, is somewhere. It's, it's right here. It's right here. Is it? Yeah, behind me. Oh, yeah. It's up there. It's up there. You, you can, you me, you you can grab, grab it if you want. <laughs> Just mute yourself. So this game, Control, what I got it for free as part of the PlayStation. Um, <clears throat> as part of the PlayStation Plus subscription. Oh, and there goes my, my mic again. Hold on a second. Uh, every time I get excited, I unplug something. I got it for free. You got that book for free? No, no. Sorry, I got the game for free. Oh. Part of the play, play, PlayStation Plus subscription. Every month they give you a free game. Got it. And um, I was like, what is this? The logo I thought was really cool, which is this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's this sort of... Is it upside down? I think it's upside I think it's like this. supposed to be like this, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> I got it. Come anyway, on. I know, fam. I just I wasn't ready to talk about this. I ended up buying the book because the storytelling in this game was actually really cool and it's like this sort of sci-fi fantasy game of like this thing that a dimension that's open and you know takes over and you go into this bureau they call it the bureau of control and you have the board all that to say is that it inspired me so much that i ended up changing the way i told or the the language that i used even on the guy at the god as a designer project just because i i really enjoyed how they the brutalist the 1970s or 60s style of like um design uh like i said like the architecture all that stuff was really cool so this is the and you can probably see the logo here right you can see it i think that's uh avant-garde but show the inside some of the icons yeah, yeah. that inspired uh, yeah. you so um even if you go into if you look at at, at guy and you go into the departments they had these sectors in the game that really that i i was like this is so sick this i gotta make department stop talking about this huh am i like nerding out right now yeah but i'm saying you you would not stop talking oh yeah about yeah 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 even like look even i don't know if you can see this but even the the federal bureau of control logo and i'm trying not to like oh shoot this is falling um even the federal bureau of control logo that's how, that's what it's oh look at this it's like a file um it inspired the Dota logo, which was the Bureau. I called it the Bureau of Creation, and um, which was super dope. I saw, I saw, I was looking at the behind the scenes of the voice actors. I'm looking here if there's anything here in specific. No, this is a file system. Um, anyway, all that to say is I feel like gaming is one of the, my sources of inspiration just because the storytelling is so important. And a game, if a game can have amazing graphics, but if the, stor the story is terrible... Uh, people are not going to forgive it. That's good. You know, they're not going to forgive it. So it's like, you're, you, I feel like it is. So you're you're looking at the connection of like these visuals to how they make you feel. How they make you feel. Mm, yeah. And even in, in the with the Gaia project, 
a lot of the language, the visual language. That's really good, babe. And a lot of the language that I use is because specifically inspired, not just from this, but from other things, mm-hmm. other brands that I really that I really enjoy. But it takes people on like this journey, and yeah. and people, I get DMs all the time on, on the Instagram from God as a designer, because it's not only for graphic designers; it's not designers overall, but it's it just people can attach themselves or they can relate to the messaging mm. but also how it's told how the how it's displayed yeah. you know so my all the departments which i hope i can find it all the departments like the rewards department the sales department mm-hmm. i have like a coffee department all those departments which was inspired from here um people can really like that stuff you know yeah. and i i mean that's one of the, my sources of, of inspo I'm, i know Love i went it. off on a deep tangent but this game control and right now it's available for playstation 5 get it they're actually working on the sequel control 2 i'm looking for here to see if i have the 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 all the sectors there was a whole thing about sectors the brutalist architecture in the game look at this look at these symbols there's a symbology for the printers can you see that the symbology this is insane like i looked at the studio they're like in europe somewhere and i was like oh my god if i could work there or if i, if I could at least just talk to the designer that made all this stuff yeah. it's a beautiful game it's really well done it's it was really creepy it is creepy oh here it is Here's one. This is called a maintenance sector. And there's a map for it. Can you see it there? Okay. I see it. See the logo there? I was already using that little diamond shape for, um, actually it's here on my sleeve for some of the other stuff. Wow, totally went nerded out. But anyway, gaming is one of the reasons. I, I play obviously because it's sometimes a little mundane and I just got to unplug, but also some of the storytelling I really enjoy. Um, also pop culture i pull stuff from sci-fi movies anything from like <clears throat> we like interstellar or 2001 space odyssey mm, you just reminded me of yeah all those all these really d- deeps uh, not, not deep all these sci-fi movies that take you on this journey of space and the cosmos yeah. and ask questions and that pair that with like a soundtrack from Hans Zimmer or something like that and it's just out of control it's like you get super inspired you know so yeah. i know it's not I know my answer is not as business or no. As, it's good. I lo- but, I actually really love that. But I, I should give a third one because you gave a third one. But I don't have a third one. Those are the only two, at least for right now, that I can think of, that where I pull inspo from. Um, and like I said, I think my handle would be if I were to handle all this. Mm-hmm. It's the storytelling aspect of of what it is you're trying to do or what it is you're trying to achieve through visual language of design. Yeah is just as important as where you land mm. in the design yeah. you know because i know we're talking about i'm trying to like tie it back to creative blockage or whatever it's like in the beginning if you could think about the story that you're trying to tell or at least figure that out and then you can sort of take the steps to visually represent that story i think it will help you get to a solution that's a lot stronger you know i really love that i might just be a little bit more okay with the gaming situation <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I want Shout to say out. one more Shout out. that you just you just reminded me of. And this is Angel has exposed me to so many things um, like anime and yeah, sci fi and different yeah. things. But I want to yeah. talk about anime, mm. comic books. Mm-hmm. So I didn't I got inspired. One of our favorite movies and we actually have we have so many things. I, I love books. So <laughs> we have the first pulling. edition of um the comic for um akira akira yeah and um that's one of our favorite yeah animes yeah that's the right term right i don't want to sound yeah it's an anime yeah from the that one's (laughs) from the 80s excuse me um and for me personally the story is a little dark i just simply love the visuals the the way that it was drawn and the colors and like just how it captivates you and the statement that that style of art made when it came out. That's right. That, okay, so here, I think these are like, I would say a little bit of, you can start seeing the differences in Angel and I have the things he focuses on because he, the guy is just a des- like true and true designer. So like, he's like, oh, he's those sim-, and he'll sit there in his computer and he'll start drawing all this stuff on the computer. Where I'm more like, how does this all this stuff work and the statements that things make and like why people made those decisions, etc. So I was doing an exercise with the team around uh, creating a season look and we decided that we were going to go into a drawn um, creative direction um, and I wanted to draw scenes and those scenes had to relate 
to Vu. So it had to be something that when somebody from Vu saw it, they could relate to it. Right. Or somebody outside of Vu could learn what Vu stu- stood for. And so I was talking to them um, about how to interpret and draw some of these scenes. So they had to communicate to the illustrators um, what it was that we were trying to achieve and how to draw it, basically. And there was a scene, this is from, this is not from Akira, this is from the other one that you showed me that was on Netflix that they made a movie about and it was bad. <clears throat> um, Ghost in the Shell. No. Uh, uh, Cowboy Bebop. Gab- uh-huh, that one. Okay. Um, there's this scene there where this girl dies. And this is like in 2D, I believe. Oh, it's yeah. It's 2D an- animation. Yeah. She dies, and the way they represent her death, because I believe they didn't show blood. So the way she fell, and as she's falling, there's like these doves that yeah. are coming from like the opposite direction. I remember. And the color palette, and but the, the slow motion, all of that came Sick. together to inform you of everything that you needed to know at that point. So that's another thing that inspires me like just even those limitations of 2d this is the medium that i'm working on but i have to convey x y and z that stuff to me i'm like oh let's do it like Sick. i'm ready for for the game so anyway Sam, what you're a like rant. inspiring me right now like i just want to make stuff and the baby's crying it's like oh my god I know, what, what go. are we gonna do okay guys so <laughs> ideas that was great, <laughs> that was great. look i honestly super ins- i i everything you shared i I, I appreciate like how different you you and I approach certain things and yeah. what you mentioned about F one and even Chick fil A from the business side of I I I can see that and yeah. I and I think it's it's really cool that we're able to at least from two pillars or two different approaches um, find ways to get inspired and to sort of overcome these yeah um, creative block if you want to call challenges. it you know, challenges yeah. I want to say. So, guys, no such thing mm-hmm. as creative block. You got this. You're equipped yes. with everything that you need uh, to be able to ideate. Uh, get some friends that encourage you, speak into you so that you can get some yeah. courage. That's a whole other conversation, the psychology yeah. behind designing. A hundred percent. A lot that's, of feelings involved. Yeah. Uh, but that's it for today's episode. Great Angel, job. last words? No, I just want to say great job. This is awesome. Probably this one of my fun. favorite. Episode two episode two episode two hopefully there's more to come um we love you guys and make sure you, you're following us in the social medias and stuff yes. and um, um and yeah thank you guys for joining us we'll see you on the next episode shout out to avon who's crying right now we gotta go get him and, and, and as we always say make beautiful, beautiful things yeah we love you guys love you peace thank you for joining made in house on your way out if you would be so kind to follow Subscribe and or like our episode in the relevant social media platforms. Feel free to share this episode with your colleagues. And, as always, keep making beautiful things.